the top or bottom, however you want to put it, but we're looking at number 10. It's Scorpina. 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 Now, I do remember her. She was only in the first season, right? She was in the first season. She was in kind of the third season, but it was kind of like chop footage. And But to me, it was something different. It, it was a woman. She was powerful. She was strong. She beat them up. And in the comics that came out now, she had a great, great storyline. So if you're in the Power Rangers and you liked that character, I would highly suggest picking up the new comics. Nice. All right. Well, there we go. That's a fantastic way to kick this off. So let's keep things going now and see what you got for number nine. I only have one monster of the week actually on this list. So the fact that okay. he made this list is pretty not surprising, but it speaks volumes to what they made this character do. Uh, Perantis Head was his name. He was the okay. monster in the primetime episodes. But in the lore of Power Rangers, he was the first villain that Lord Zed made. He destroyed the original Zords. Uh, so that was, in and by itself, at, it, at the time, was the first real scene where they lost. That was a big deal. It was That's a, why it was a two-parter, because that first episode, they deal. got destroyed. Yeah. I mean, there were episodes where they lost, but they came back like, they lost. Like, your Zords are gone. We're going to make new ones. More toys. But yeah. they're gone. All right. Well, here we go. Then let's keep going. What do you got for number eight? Her name is Diva Tox. Talking about the accomplishments. Zeo power is not as powerful to beat Diva Tox. So that makes him very powerful. At the end of Power Rangers and Turbo, which is a god awful season, she and her minions blow up the command center, the power dome. Okay. Com kaput. It goes away. And then she goes into space to see with, to be with. Dark Spectre, who's like the grand evil, grand poobah guy. So the Rangers have to chase her. So she straight up beats them. Blows up the command center. Turbo powers are no more. 100% defeated. So during this era, she's the only one to truly defeat them to the point where they're chasing after her and they don't have Power Ranger powers. They're going okay. into space with no powers. They're just going... Okay, we're going to hop on a spaceship and hope for the best. Okay. Again, suspend your disbelief. They have nothing. So that's why she's made the list. All right. Um, that is number eight. So that bleeds us to Lucky, number seven. He's from Power Rangers in Space. Okay. The main villain was Astronomer. Second in command was a okay. guy named Ecliptor. He stole her away kind of they don't really go into too much detail about it he acted like her adopted father okay so he was trying to make her turn evil but then he was just kind of trying to protect her he's the guy that is at the very moment before zordon dies he's the one that's stopping the rescue to be happening it was just something different it was a little dark for power rangers saying that astronomer was kidnapped and she's being kind of brainwashed the earlier seasons kind of mentioned it, like when the Green Rangers brainwashed and things like that, but he snaps out of it. This was like the entire season. It was, at the time, to me, one of the more, not darker, but more adult. Mature? Yeah, yeah. darker, more mature. Like, he's not a good guy, and he's brainwashing this was what was once was an innocent child. Here we go. Number six. This is where I might get some hate mail. It's yes. Rita Repulsa. Now, you may oh, be wow. asking me, why is she so low on the list? I'll explain. Please do, because, I mean, she's... When, when I think of Power Rangers, she is the main villainess that I think of. Okay. Now, can you tell me, because you did watch during that era pretty regularly, correct? Yes. Okay. Can you tell me her powers, other than make my monster grow? Well, she had a magic wand, and mm -hmm. she was just... She was a witch, right? Wasn't that the whole thing? Was she was basically just like a witch with a staff? Yeah. In Japan, she was pretty badass, but do you remember when she fought the Power Rangers like in hand-to-hand -hand combat? I, I honestly don't. Did she? Because she didn't. She never did. She never, actually, okay. she never actually did anything in Power Rangers. She was a commander. And so that, for you, that, that lowers her down because, like, listen, if you're going to be a, a true leader of villains, you got to be able to get your hands dirty. Exactly. Somebody's okay. not doing their job. I got to step in. Yes, she'll make Finster 
make the putties and the monster That's of the true. week. That's true. She doesn't even make their own, her own villains. No. She's just literally bossing people around. No, all she does, she's she's a supervisor. Anyway, all right. So Rita Repulsa coming in at number six could be controversial. Let us know what you think on the Generation S podcast Facebook page at Generation S. And let's move on down the list here to number five. The Psycho Rangers. It's a group. It's a group of bad Power Rangers but they actually have a storyline behind them. So they gave them a little bit of storyline in terms of why they were created, how were they were cre- how they were created. They were monsters in Power Ranger suits. Okay. So, well, I'm looking at them. So I, I did pull them up on the old Google search engine yep. here and they do, they look pretty bad. I will say I'm disappointed that they're basically all the same, except they're different colors. Yep. Um, normally the Power Rangers have kind of unique, you know, outfits, uh, but I mean, but they're they look bad. pretty they cool. They have to wear ca- black. Well, they look like a cross between like Wolverine and, and Batman. Isn't that, that's pretty cool, though. It's very cool. No, yeah. no, they look cool. I agree. Yeah, and you have a, a flame monster, a stone monster, ice monster, spider monster, and a plant monster. So it's not just a regular human underneath it. It's an actual monster, which is something different also, because at that point, you've only seen humans, so to speak, become Power Rangers. Now you're seeing something completely different be able to get those powers so it was something different it was refreshing the look was awesome the idea like i said previously about something with power rangers in space it seems more mature it wasn't just i'm gonna make these bad guys well i'm gonna make these bad guys so i want because i want to overthrow him and take his position they were moving pieces and that's why power rangers in space is regarded to be the one of the best seasons of the entire franchise yeah. All right. Well, very cool. So that was number five. That means we are now down to number four. I mentioned your name a few times, and I'm fairly certain you're not surprised that Astronomer made the list. Back to Power Rangers in space. So are you seeing a pattern here that almost every villain from in space has made this list? Her nicknames include the Princess of Evil, the Dark Princess of Space, and the Princess of Darkness. I'm sensing a pattern there as well. Yes. So we kind of discussed it already that she was stolen as a child, kind of brainwashed. She's the sister of the Red Ranger, trying to take over to be the CEO of evil. So I kind of discussed her already, but let's talk about the face turn. She becomes good. She does. Because if you're a fan favorite, you got to turn good. So she does become good. And she actually does return in the following season of Power Rangers. So she comes, she debuts in space. She comes back in Lost Galaxy. There was an issue off screen. One of the Rangers, unfortunately, did become legitimately uh, ill. I I don't want to specify what the issue was and get it wrong, but I know it was the Pink Ranger. And it was serious enough that the the actress had to be written off the show for a period of time. So they brought her back because she was a fan favorite and she became the Pink Ranger. So, that was oh, pretty nice. cool. So that's, you were talking about the mature themes. Story arc. She was innocent. She was stolen. She redeems herself. She becomes an agent of good. And then actually, I want to say five years ago, when they had the really big reunion show, 25th anniversary, there was a handful of rangers that came and actually showed up out of costumes. You actually saw who they were. She was one of them. And they did acknowledge that she used to be evil. So that was pretty cool. Let's go ahead and see what you have for number three. I'm pretty sure you knew this guy was going to make the list. Goldar. Yes. He was the first villain that the Rangers ever fought. Definitely seasons one, two, and three into Zeo a little bit, too. So he was a recurring character for, for quite a while. He did turn out to be a goofball, but again, after how many episodes, like how can you continuously make this guy a menace and not win? <laughs> it is. But how about he was one of the only villains to pilot a Zord of his own? He helped destroy the original power coins. He planted bombs in the command center to blow it up at the end of the third season of Mighty Morphin. So he did some he did some bad stuff back in the day. Yeah. All right, man. We're uh, we're getting down to the uh, down to the wire here. Uh, number two. I said Tommy Oliver was the greatest ranger of all time. He's also the second best villain of all time. I'm going with now, the we- original Green Ranger, the bad Green Ranger, the bad Power yep. Ranger, the guy that made it cool 
in a kid's show to be bad. The first time I ever looked at a kid's show and went, oh, my God, they're going to lose. He's bad. He's cool, though. He was cool to be bad. I think he, first off, 100% agree with you. I think he is on a very short list of villains that are almost too cool for their own good. Yeah. Um, So okay. the Green Ranger in Japan, his life was that candle. So when the candle went away, like they did in America, where, oh, Tommy lost his powers, the Green Ranger in Japan actually lost his life. So, gotcha. so that was the equivalent, like, well, we can't have the guy die. It's a kid's show. Yeah. And also toys. Right. So yeah. let's make them a different color. Lay it on us. Number one. Who do you think it is? I really hope it's who I think it is. So, I'll say that. Okay. Did, were you thinking Lord Zed? Yes, I was thinking Lord Zed. It is Lord Zed. Yes. The He's Emperor awesome. of Evil. He is fantastic. He is, he is the legit scary the for kids. things of nightmares. He was so freaking terrifying. That the parents wrote in. He was hideous. He was a human with no skin. We discussed briefly, even though we didn't go into the Green Ranger and what he does. You know, Tommy does his thing when he's bad. He destroys the command center. He beats up the Power Rangers in the Megazord. That's all fine and good. Lord Zed takes it to another level. Zed creates his own monsters. He goes, I'm going to create a piranha. He does it himself. Yep. So he does fight the Rangers hand to hand a few times, but accomplishments so to speak if you can call a fictional character having an accomplishment or not him per se but underneath his rulership the original megazords destroyed by him yep he piloted serpentera it blows yeah. up a planet blows up a planet yeah. so it has the capability of like the death star yep he along with goldar destroyed the original power coins in the mighty Morphin power rangers so he blows up the machine empire He's an American creation, which in and of itself for Power Rangers is pretty cool because I yes. think he's really the only one other than unless you count like the movies, right? The movies yeah. had like Ivan Ooze. We haven't talked about Ivan Ooze, by the way. He oh, didn't I'm make sorry. your list Was he, as Would well. he have made your list? He absolutely would have made my list. Really? Yes. I loved Ivan Ooze. I thought he was amazing. I thought he was creepy. I thought the fact that he was able to really handle Zed and Rita so handily, I'm like, oh, this guy's bad. If he's beating up those guys, he's got to be pretty bad. So no, Ivan Ooze would have made my personal top 10. I'm not ashamed to say that. But um, anyway, going back to the fact that I don't think anyone other than Zed was an American original villain, right? Or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I, I feel I, like in my memory, that's the only one. Dark Specter in space. There we go again is an original villain, but he's a puppet, okay. so he's not he's not as bad as. Gotcha. That's fair. Yeah, because Lord Zed is is a, is a character, is a human character, not you, a humanoid. No, he um, is, is human. He, human? I, I, he is human. I was okay. going to end with this. So this okay. is how I want to end it. Do you know how he became what he is? Like like this? I have, I have no idea. So remember in the beginning of this, I mentioned there was an issue with the Zeo Crystal and what happened, and it's so powerful. He touched it. It was kind of like in Marvel when you touch the Power Stone or any Infinity Stone. You're not powerful enough. Bad yeah. things happen. Okay. He touched the Zeo Crystal and it corrupted him. It corrupted him by melting off his skin. That's terrifying. So underneath that mask, he's Lord Zed is a human. He literally just has no skin and he put a visor over his face. 